welcome to Witchy Woman Podcast. I'm your host, Danae Sweet, and this is episode 31. Today's episode is coming out a day late because, well, I had a lot of shit to do. <laughs> I got back from my South Dakota trip, got home, and kind of was overwhelmed with things, and it just took me an extra day to get this out, and I apologize. I am so sorry, but shit happens, and it's out today. <laughs> I wanted to tell you about my trip to South Dakota. I went horseback riding, and it was fantastic. I also wanted to go over pumpkin spice. This is the season of all things pumpkin spice. I am a basic bitch and I love all things pumpkin spice. So what I did was look at all the ingredients to make pumpkin spice and I broke it down into the the magical properties and the practical properties of each one of those herbs. So... That way, when you're buying that extra pumpkin spice latte, you can say it's for a magical reason or a health reason or whatever makes you feel better um, spending money on an extra pumpkin spice latte. For me, it's everything pumpkin spice. I love the lattes. I love pumpkin spice cookies and muffins. I love the um, pumpkin spice, just the, the spice that you can get in like your local grocery store. I put that shit in my coffee because I'm a cheap ass basic bitch, so I add that to my coffee in the morning to make my own like cheap pumpkin spice latte in the mornings, and I love it. It's just something I do in the fall. It makes me feel like fall, um, gets me in the mood, and I wanted to share the magic of pumpkin spice with everybody else. So I want to tell you about my trip. My trip to South Dakota was something I have been needing. I needed a break um, for so long. I haven't been away from the home. I haven't been away from home since before last October, for sure. I cannot remember the last time I got to go up there, but I know that was probably the last time was before October. So this trip was seriously needed. Um, We left on Wednesday. I didn't get home until like late on Sunday. I took my horse up there and it was... (sighs) I swear my dogs can't be quiet for me to do a podcast, (laughs) so excuse the barking. But anyway, took my horses up there with some friends, and it was fabulous. It was kind of eventful. (laughs) Um, So the first day, we're we're meeting, me and my friend were meeting another, uh, some other friends and or friend, and she brought her husband, and we were waiting for them because they were kind of the navigators. So we got up at the ass crack of dawn on Wednesday and took off with our horses, It's like a three and a half hour drive from here. For her, it's like a total of six hours, something like that. But anyway, she picks me up. We get there and we're there early. So we decide we don't need no navigators. (laughs) We'll just go ahead and go out riding on our own. So also keep in mind, I brought a very... We call it green horse, meaning he is very inexperienced. He's not very well trained yet. He hasn't had a lot of experience outside home. So he's going to need some confident horses to follow. And that's another reason Carrie and I wanted to bring our our younger horses is because our other friend had some really uh, solid older horses they could follow and kind of like get their confidence from. Anyway, I digress. So picture it. It's like, I don't know, we got there after lunch. We're like, screw it, let's just go for a ride. And we plan on being gone for just a little bit. We're like, we'll do a really short loop. We ask the guy at the lodge for some directions and a map. He tells me, you don't need no stinking map. <laughs> and tells me a general direction, a way to go. And then says, if you get lost, point your chest towards the sun and that'll get you back to the lodge. Famous last words. <laughs> so we go out and I'm so proud of my horse. He's freaking walking up these trails in the hills and there's rocks he's not used to rocks we are in the sand hills of nebraska so we have sand we don't have rocks we don't have rough terrain or lots of trees he's taking all this in stride so we get going and south dakota has had a shitload of rain so down the mountains there's a lot of washouts where like the rain has come down and made little areas that look like it could be a trail but really it's just water that has rushed down the hill um, and made a little cut. So anyway, somehow we get turned around and we go down what I'm guessing was a washout. Lots of rocks. It was very, very technical trail, meaning it was really hard for the horses to pick around and find their footing. 
So we wander around for a while and we realize, well, shit, we're lost. And then well, the next thought was, well, shit, I don't know how to get back to the trail that we came in on. So I'm panicking, which is making my friend panic. My horse is now feeling my panic and starts to get a little edgy. Anyway, long story short, we wander around for quite a while and I'm like, screw it, let's turn our chests to the sun and just start walking. So we kind of did that and we ended up finding a road in our way back. So yay, day one, lost. <clears throat> we get back and I know it was a great, you know, we, it was fun. It was a good memory. We got lost, haha, -ha, funny. Anyway, <laughs> put our horses away and had supper. The next day I wake up at like 5.30 in the morning and go and sit on the lodge's like front porch area where they had some Wi-Fi so I could get on the internet and um, check my email, call my husband when he woke up and I got to watch the sun just peek up and warm up the rocks in the, the mountains in front of me. I got to see that and it was fabulous. I, I had such peace in the mornings I was there. So anyway, did that, drank my gallons of coffee, um, and then we got around to finally getting the whole group together, and we left. I left on my new, or my green horse, Loki. <laughs> so not actually green, just inexperienced. So we left. I decided that my horse should probably be in the back following my friend's horse because they're stabled together and he, he's kind of excited to be with her. So I figure if something happens and he doesn't want to go forward, at least he has like a target to follow. So anyway, we do really well. He's like rocking it. Everything's fine. He's being very calm. And we get to the first water crossing. And I want to say it's, I don't know, it's very still. It's not like a river. It's kind of rocky. Um... But there's probably, I don't know, 10 feet across to, from bank to bank. So it's not like he can just, like, step in and step out. He has to take a couple steps in there. And I don't know what happened with his freaking brain, but he, like, locked up and decided, nope, not going, and got very fearful. So I got off and thought, well, he trusts me. I will get out or got off, and I will stand in the stream and see if he'll follow me. First mistake. <laughs> if I'm on him, at least he can't run me over. So anyway, so I get down and that's my first thought. I was like, shit, if he jumps, because horses will tend to not want to go, not want to go, kind of rock back on their legs and then leap over things that they're afraid of. And I was kind of ready for that. So I kind of wa walked off to the side and finally he decides I'm going in the water. So this is where my accident happens. <laughs> So my reins have a little clip on them. The clip has a little place to use your thumb to open and close the clip. It's like a lobster clip kind of um, design. I'll post it so you can understand what I'm talking about. But anyway, I had the reins in my hand. That's on the end of the reins. He jumps sideways instead of forward like I thought he would. He kind of jumps off to the side. And your first reaction is to hold on to the reins really hard so he can't, you know, get away that was dumb. So he jumps away and then jumps once more and rips the reins through my hands. I know, cringing because you know what's coming here. I had a really good grip and that pokey thing on the reins cut into the webbing in my thumb and basically poked in and ripped up. So I had a pretty good hole in my hand at this point. So we're out, you know, an hour from the, the trail, from where we were staying I have a giant hole in my hand. My horse is really scared and upset now, and he's young, and I'm upset at myself for putting him in that situation. So anyway, luckily, thank, oh, I'm just so happy that one of the people we are with is a nurse. So I realized, I looked down, I'm like, oh shit, I have a fucking hole in my hand. <laughs> luckily, we were carrying some medical supplies. I brought them to her, and she cleaned out my wound with the bottled water and wrapped it up so at least I wouldn't get any gunk in it. And I decided at that point, okay, it's not life-threatening. It's, you know, eventually it stopped bleeding. There was a lot of blood at first, but finally stopped bleeding. And I thought, I can't stop now. I don't want to ruin the experience for everybody else. I was pretty upset and 
<clears throat> I don't get scared that easy when on horses, but it was kind of traumatic. I saw my horse really, really afraid and, you know, I have a giant wound and I don't like my own blood. It creeps me out to see my own wounds. Now, other people, I can wrap them up and see their, you know, yucky, bloody stuff and it doesn't bother me. My own? Ugh. So anyway, I'm kind of feeling and we start to go and then when we realize that this is the trail, the particular trail we were on had quite a few water crossings. And at this point, my horse is very afraid and very upset. So we try to do the next couple crossings. He's not going. I have to get off. And he's becoming dangerous and erratic because now he's almost hurting himself, not just me. He's smashing into rocks and trees. And at one point, I was afraid he was going to impale himself. He like jumped over a cut off tree and I'm just cringing. My friend even tried helping, you know, the situation. She got on and tried to force him to do it. And I think that probably like made it worse because then he was really pissed off because he went from afraid <laughs> to pissed off because now he has to do this thing he doesn't want to do over and over and over and he's young and his personality is a rather stubborn one at this point I'm crying like I am a giant ball of bleh and I'm crying because I'm scared for my horse I'm crying because I don't know I'm a big giant baby and when I get mad I cry so I'm mad at the whole situation I'm mad at myself because I didn't work with water crossings before I came to this trail I didn't even think about it I forgot that there was water crossings so I'm mad at myself I'm mad at my whores <laughs> I'm just pissed off and then I'm crying and I'm like I'm with my friends and now I'm bawling so now I'm mad at myself so anyway we finally get away from we turn around we saw a beautiful cave before we turned around I'll post pictures of that too it was freaking amazing scenery so anyway we made the executive decision that I should probably turn around because my hands starting to swell pretty bad so we get to a place where um I can call the lodge and have the tr them bring a truck and trailer and pick me up so that I can get I don't have to ride my horse anymore we can go back to the lodge and we can I can clean myself up and wait for the everybody else to come um, long story short, I ended up going to urgent care in South Dakota and getting myself, they cleaned it up, um, glued it together because they figured stitches, I'd probably just rip them out because of the, actually the, where my cut is, if you open it and close your hand or grip anything, it just keeps, and, and it's true. I keep ripping it open. The glue actually came off and I just keep ripping it open. So I went and got some like butterfly bandages and that's as good as it's going to get. Anyway bad day on Friday <laughs> or Thursday. Thursday was a shitty day. Friday, I decided to stay home while they went, you know, stay at the camp while they um, rode their horses. And it was, I had a beautiful day. I took my time. I had my coffee. I watched the sunrise. They left um, and I prepped for lunch early. So I cut up all kinds of vegetables and potatoes, got the meat marinating for steaks. And then I decided I'm going to, oh, I went on a walk with my horse so I could stretch his legs and see. Um, he did sustain some very sh small injuries, some abrasions and uh, a couple bruises and things like that. But he, overall, we both got away from that whole situation way luckier than we could have been. So anyway, I tended to him and then I decided I wanted to take a, a walk because um, South Dakota has quartz and rose quartz everywhere. It's up and down the trails and I could not wait like the day the first day on Wednesday I saw it all on the trail I'm like ooh, I'm coming back here with my backpack and I'm gonna collect rocks so anyway that's what I did on Friday I hiked about a mile into the trail had a little break with some granola bars and I you know took some water and kind of had my own little picnic and I got a shit ton of rocks I found I was really looking for some black tourmaline in quartz and I I found oh I don't know I found two or three pieces of that I found what looks like smoky quartz I didn't think that we have smoky quartz in the Black Hills but I still have to look up whether what that is I'll post pictures and see what you guys think it's definitely not terminated or anything um, it's just big chunks but it's a brown crystalline structure so I'm not sure that's the only thing I can think it is unless it's clear quartz with some kind of inclusion or some black tourmaline behind it making it dark I don't know I, I will post the picture so you guys can see what it is but anyway I got I had so much fun I went crystal hunting I found rose quartz I found some beautiful really dark pieces I found some that were kind of like ombre they went from like the 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 white you know quartz and then just kind of 
worked its way up to Rose, and I just, oh, I had a fabulous day. I communed with nature. I listened to the birds. It was just an amazing day. I had a had steak for supper, and when everybody got back, and then it was just great. So anyway, then Saturday. <laughs> so Saturday, we all went for a ride because I was feeling better, and my friend loaned it, loaned it, Jesus, I did go to school, loaned me <laughs> her horse. They had, they brought an extra, so I was loaned a horse so that I could go riding on Saturday because I felt better. We decided um, partway through our ride that we were going to ride all the way to Mount Rushmore so we could see the faces. And it is a beautiful ride, but (laughs) it's like 23 miles. So on horseback, that's a long ways. It wouldn't be so bad if it was just straight, but it's a lot of up. So anyway, it was, I think, I don't know, it was over five hours to get there. And we got there and it was beautiful. And then like the realization that my tired ass had to ride my horse all the way back. (laughs) Yay. So at this point, I'm kind of over it, but it's still beautiful. Um, We spent nine hours and 40 minutes in the saddle with probably a five, 10 minute break when we were at the top um, of the Mount Rushmore like peak thing where you can see the faces. And I'll post that too. But it was a fantastic ride, but we were all done. We got done, and we all looked like we had the shit kicked out of us. We were walking around like, oh, my back hurts, my knees. My knee was freaking shot. Needless to say, nobody wanted to ride (laughs) Sunday before we left. So we just kind of relaxed. I went for another hike. I took my friend and helped her look for, she loves rose quartz. So I looked, helped her look for some really cool rose quartz pieces. And then I did find this other material. I'm going to post it. I don't know what the hell it is. It's beautiful. It's like a peachish, it's like a peachish pink. And I know I've seen it somewhere and I'm, I just have to look through my books to see what it is, but I'll post that too. And if I figure out what it is, I'll post what it is, uh, on our Facebook page. Anyway, fabulous trip. I needed to get away. I like did a ton of just mind clearing and thinking and grounding. And it's no wonder I love South Dakota with all of that energy of the, the stones that are there. I mean, basically rose quartz and quartz are just everywhere. So the ground is infused with it. There's um, beautiful stones with like mica flakes on them. And then I'm not sure what mineral, I'm guessing some kind of pyrite, but the sand is glittery, like golden glittery on the trails. So like when you get off, your shoes have like gold glitter on it. It was funny. After I fell in the water during the accident on Thursday, well, I got done, when I was all dried off, I noticed like everything was glittery because of the water and the sand um, underneath of it. It like got churned up when all that happened. So I had like glitter everywhere and it was, I don't know. I love glitter. I know it's like, like craft glitter is, what is, okay. My friend Molly calls it craft herpes because you can't get rid of it. (laughs) And that's kind of what this dirt was. Like it was gold and sparkly and I got home and I'm washing, washing my clothes and I was like knocking the dirt off of all my, my boots and my riding equipment. And I noticed like everything has this beautiful golden glitter sheen to it. And I was like, gosh, that's so cool. I just, I don't know. It, it's, it was neat because I'm kind of a rock nerd. So it made me smile. So I haven't had to go, I haven't had time yet to go through any of my rock finds yet, but I'm going to clean them up and I will post pictures so that you can see what, see what my haul is. Like I brought home so much ahead of my, have my husband, um, carry it all up to the house because I, I'm one handed right now. Um, I'm left handed. I'm normally right handed, but that's where I have my giant hole in my hand. So I have to do everything with my left hand, which is really sucking. <laughs> I'm uncoordinated brushing my teeth. Looks like a two year old is doing it among other things like I'm having a hell of a time but I am learning I'm gonna master this ambidextrous ambidextrous shit um before this thing heals so that if I do anything again to my right hand or arm or something that I will be prepared and it will probably happen because I am such a klutz if something's gonna happen I will I will do it I don't know if it's because I'm 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 not unaware of what's going on around me I just I'm a freaking klutz (laughs) So, okay, so that was my trip. I had a really great time. Thank you for everybody for being patient. If you emailed me or posted on my pages and I didn't respond right away, I'm so sorry, but that's where I was. I had 
absolutely no actual cell service. I had to go to the lodge every morning to get a little bit of Wi-Fi so I could um, check my emails. That's the only way I could call my hubby is using Facebook Messenger, <laughs> using their Wi-Fi. So I was kind of MIA, but I think I, I really needed that. I needed to unplug and it was great. So thank you for giving me that time. Okay. So now on to magical pumpkin spice. <laughs> so I looked up the ingredients of pumpkin spice and they said, most places said it was cinnamon, nutmeg, ginger, cloves, and allspice. So what I did was look all of those things up and what what they do and, and the magical properties of them so that we can kind of infuse that magical intention into our pumpkin spice lattes. <laughs> Okay, well, let's start with cinnamon. That's my favorite um, and probably the most known fall type herb. So cin cinnamon, cinnamon is a fire. Uh, it's, it's correlated with the fire element and the sun. It's a masculine um, energy, mainly used in magical purposes for love, sex, um, magic, prosperity, and also aids, uh, helps aid in healing spell healing spells <laughs> and help sanctify areas so it can help purify or bless an area. Some of the um, more mundane uses for it, um, it's a non-toxic bug repellent, keeps ants away, it's good for digestion, good for digestion. <laughs> it's antifungal and it also is antibacterial. So it's kind of a powerhouse herb. I was looking all these things up and I'm like, God damn, it's really a well-rounded, useful herb. No wonder I love it. <laughs> okay, so on to nutmeg. Nutmeg um, corresponds with air, uh, the planet Jupiter, and its male or masculine energy. Um, it is primarily used in gambling spells of you know, like luck. So um, put a little bit in a like a spell bag in your pocket and it can help with gambling to kind of sway the odds in your favor. It's also great for um, court cases to kind of to help that <laughs> that um, decision be more fav favorable to you. It's great for good luck in traveling. So you can use that in a traveling uh, spell bag or sachet as well. Um, for magical uses, it's used to increase your ability for divination. So it increases your psychic skills like clairvoyance. You can add it to a money drawing oil to add a little punch to it. It's great for digestion. It lowers gas and, and acid and stomach acid. So if you're gassy or you got a little acid problem, um, nutmeg's great for that. Calming. It's calming. Um, it helps if you want to go to sleep at night, put a little nutmeg in your tea. And it also is good in poultices for minor skin irritations or boo-boos. I thought that was kind of neat. Okay, the next one we have is ginger. And I found that it is associated with the element of fire. It's a masculine energy. And Mars is the planet. It is used to add power to any magical workings. I think that's freaking awesome. So it's like a all purpose um like amp amp up herb <laughs> if you hear the train in the background i'm super sorry it also is to it's used to add like to speed up so if you want to speed up the timetable on your your spell you can add ginger to it to kind of speed things up but know that there can be consequences for taking shortcuts just a little warning there it can add passion to our relationships. You can add it to love spells or passion spells to add something extra to your relationship. It's said to increase your chi. So if you are feeling a little, if you're lacking energy, if you're lacking, just your life force energy feels a little low, you can add that and uh, focus that intention on increasing your chi. Um, some of the mundane uses is it increases your uh, your immune system's ability to rebound from sicknesses. It helps upset tummies, morning sicknesses, nausea in general. It's great for it. I I have love those little ginger candies, those chewy ones. To me, that's like the best thing for my tummy if it's upset. It's also an anti-inflammatory, and it's said to help um, regulate your cholesterol. So it's a pretty powerful herb as well. I really thought that one was an interesting herb to learn about. The next one I have is cloves. And that one um, is associated with fire. It's a masculine herb. And the planet that it's corresponding with is Jupiter. 
gosh dang, these kitties are, like, trying to jump on my computer, and you're causing havoc, dudes. Anyway, cloves. <laughs> it's used in spells that are for luck and prosperity and abundance. Um, they said it's also used to keep good friends close, to um, reestablish or strengthen the bond between um, friends. It's also used in spells to stop gossip. I think that's freaking cool. I'm going to have to look that up. And it's also an aphrodisiac. I would not have thought of cloves. I know it's a warming, you know, herb, but I would never have thought cloves and aphrodisiac, but I may have to try that. <laughs> Watch out, hubby. I'm coming in with cloves. <laughs> uh, some of the mundane uses are that it repels moths. It's an insect repellent. It freshens your breath. It's an antibacterial and it's an anesthetic. Um, so if you have a toothache or something like that, you can take it diluted with some kind of oil and massage it on your gums. And that, that I've used it before. Please check with your doctor and please don't do this. If, you know, I just want to put a disclaimer. I'm not telling you to put clove on your skin because it can burn you. But for me, again, I have super tough skin and I can put it on my gums. And it, if I have a boo-boo or a shitty tooth, I can put it on there with a Q-tip. And oh my God, it feels so much better. What else? Oh, you can add it to massage oils for the warming effect. So some of the massage oils you'll see that kind of warm up and, and relax your muscles will have clove in it. It's great for digestion and it's said to be able to get rid of gas. So if you have a lot of flatulence, <laughs> try some cloves. They're talking about like taking them and like putting like sucking on cloves in your cheek. Um, I couldn't do that. I don't like cloves that well. Okay, the last one we have is allspice, and that one is masculine. It's a fire herb, and it is the, the oh, the planet is Mars. So all of them have been very masculine energy herbs. It's uplifting, and it's said to increase energy and determination when doing spell work. So if you really need help focusing and and zeroing in on that intention and making it powerful, adding a little allspice to your um, spell bags or your offering bowls or maybe even your incense would be really powerful. Um, it's great for healing spells, money spells, and general luck spells. Um, some of the mundane things I found that it was good for was for uh, toothaches. It's because it's a very mild anesthetic. It's not as good as clove, but it, it is mild, mildly anesthetic. Um, it's great for digestion. It's supposed to increase your appetite, uh, cure gas, and help with acne when you use it in some kind of skincare products. I thought it was funny that it increases appetite. So maybe that's why I want so much or so many Lot, uh, pumpkin spice lattes because when I drink a pumpkin spice latte I need food with it or I'm hungry afterwards so I wonder if that's just me being like I'm just I have I'm like gluttony personified when it comes to pumpkin spice but when I have one I'm like ooh, I need a muffin with it so maybe it's like some kind of super secret marketing thing that the coffee industry has picked up on they're like hey we'll put a little allspice in there and they're gonna want to eat all of our shit after they have a pumpkin spice latte if they know about it, they're geniuses. If they don't, then whatever. So anyway, <laughs> that is the magic of a pumpkin spice latte. So when you are, you know, going to the coffee shop or if you get some pumpkin spice creamer for your house or whatever it is, you can think of the magical properties of these beautiful herbs and maybe put a little intention into your coffee time. So like in the mornings when I do my coffee and I'm usually up before everybody else so I have a little bit of time to myself you know that's when I think about my day I think about the intentions that I plan for my day so I intend on being calm and happy and productive and whatever so maybe tomorrow when I do my pumpkin spice latte my cheap ass version of it <laughs> um, I am going to definitely think about the magical properties of this uh, of pumpkin spice I'm going to think I want to be, I want to be prosperous. I want to be powerful. I want to be, you know, I want to have a higher energy. Those things, it is a very masculine um, latte. <laughs> so that energy, it's got a lot of fire, a tiny bit of air. So that's a lot of action in, in as far as herbs go. So when you're drinking that, think about how you're taking and ingesting the magical properties of 
the pumpkin spice latte and apply it to your life. What do you got going on that you need to channel or use the effects of these specific herbs? So there, if you needed an excuse to go get pumpkin spice for the fall season, whether it's a candle or a latte or whatever it is, now you have a perfect excuse. It's going to add it to your spiritual practice. <laughs> right now, sitting on um, sitting on the fireplace is a like pumpkin spice candle that I got. I think we got it at the dollar store for like five bucks. So we have pumpkin spice um, candles in the living room. I've got one in the kitchen. My daughter has one in her room. So right now, I know it's still... August, <laughs> but we have fully embraced pumpkin spice season here. I've even started wearing leggings. I haven't like pulled out my boots yet or anything, but it's so close because it's so nice. It was like, I don't know, 50 degrees last night. I could open all my windows. I smell fall in the air. It's so close. Like I'm itching to like put on a big sweater, my leggings. Um, I wear like these lace up combat boots pretty much all winter long. I cannot wait to get my feet in them. It just, I feel like me. I bought some hair dye so I can fully transform into fall Danae. <laughs> soon. I went and got it, my hair trimmed, which I cannot do. I'm trying to do things on a budget because as you guys know, if you've been listening, I do not have a full-time job anymore. Um, so I'm trying to do things on a budget. So basically I'm witchy on a budget right now. So I went and got some Clairol nice and easy. No, I'm not sponsored by them, but I was looking online. They said that one is a fairly easy, uh, dye to do myself. So I got, let me, I'm reaching for it. So I'm gonna make some noise. Um, okay, so I got Clairol Nice and Easy Plum Black. And it's super pretty on her, on the box. <laughs> it's like a black brown with a little bit of, um, oh, kind of a purpley lavender hue to it. So we shall see what it looks like on my hair. Um, we will do a before and after. So like summer Danae and fall Danae. <laughs> I will let you know how it turns out. My daughter's going to have to do it for me because I have too, too long of hair. I'm, I'm afraid that I won't get it all like put in there. So I will, I will let you know how, how it goes. This is new for me. I usually go to the salon and get my hair done. So, um, this, new phase in my life has definitely teaching me how to be more frugal, how to budget. And I'm actually having a lot of fun with it. Like my witchy stuff, I normally get a lot of shit from the dollar store anyway. Um, candles and stuff. If you haven't checked out your like dollar store or dollar general, they're cheaper than Walmart. That's where I get my um, like tons and tons of white candles. I use white candles and I go through them so fast. That is where I get them. It's cheaper for me to buy them from there um, than to buy them online or my resellers. It's just cheaper. So that's where I get all my ritual candles as far as white ones. I do make my own intention candles and things like that. That's, that won't change, but there's a lot of stuff there. <laughs> I got some like craft stuff the other day because I was doing a ritual that I needed of course, I wanted glitter. <laughs> so I needed some glitter and they have glitter. They had some like, oh shit. It's like that string that's brown and it burns really easy. So I got some of that. Anyway, hit up your Dollar General. <laughs> I found all kinds of witchy goodness there. And they have their Halloween shit already out. They had it out like two weeks ago. So yay for them. Anyway, I just wanted to also say thank you to everybody that's been listening, everybody that's been emailing. I I love hearing from you guys. Um, I've had quite a few emails and messages and DMs that are just beautiful. Um, sharing your story with me and those of you that are just catching up. I think there was a couple of people that were about to June where I had, where I lost my shit and I, and I put out that video and I'm still getting people saying that they watched it and they, you know, they're in the same place right now. And I can say now I'm coming out on the other side of that place where I lost everything. I lost my faith. I lost my shit. <laughs> I mean, I lost my job. Um, it was just a very dark time. And I was talking to, I was talking to my best friend today and she said something that, she pointed out something that I really, really resonates with me. She said, you know, it felt like part of her, you know, was got ripped away. And 
I agree. It, that's, it's like part of me, my spirituality just left. It was just gone. It got stripped from me and I had to start over. And part of that rebuilding allowed me to remember who I was. I've spent like since 2017 and maybe a little before, I pretty much have dove myself into spirituality and I've lived every day trying to help people. Um, that's my purpose. I'm like, I have, I have to help people and, and dive into my spirituality and be the best human I could possibly be so that I can help humanity. And it's something I thought about 24 seven for two years straight. And I think June was my, it was the, the point in my life where spirit said, you, it's enough. I lost who I was. I didn't do anything I normally did for fun. I didn't really ride my horses anymore. I hadn't sang in probably a year and a, probably two years. I hadn't sang. And, you know, I was in a band. I loved to sing. I hadn't sang. I hadn't drawn or painted or did any of that other stuff that I, that's part of me. That's part of who I am. I had shoved all that to the side and said, basically, I'm devoting myself to the rest of humanity. <laughs> and I forgot who I was. And by getting stripped down to nothing, I was able to remember those things that brought me joy, that are part of who I am, and I'm learning to balance it. I've definitely had to step away from being the healer a little bit in order to heal myself. And I felt really guilty at first for, sh for shutting down my shop and seeing less clients. And seeing the progress within myself, it's 100% worth it. So if you're going through this, do not feel guilty for saying no or from stepping back from things or from taking time for yourself because it's necessary. It's 100% worth it. And I can tell you now because I'm um, I'm coming out the other side of it that it if I hadn't have done that, I'd still be in my deep dark hole not knowing what the fuck I'm going to do with my life. And I'm not saying I have everything figured out right now because I don't. <laughs> I don't. What I do know is that I do have my faith. Um, I do know who I am and I want to honor that person because without that, I'm, I'm just a meat suit. <laughs> I'm not me. I'm not the real me. So, I'm doing all these things that bring me joy. I'm riding my horse. I'm singing, whether it's in the shower or when no one's around or in the car. I don't care, but I'm singing. And, you know, I was seriously thinking about picking up a paintbrush and starting painting again. And I'm thinking of all these creative things that are part of my life that I have shoved to the side for the sake of others. And I don't want you to think that I'm not going to continue, you know, doing Reiki and hypnotherapy and helping people, but I am scaling back. I want, what I want are the people that really want to do the work and want to be helped to come forward. And by me stepping back a little bit, I think that gives them the room to step forward. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but that's what my guides keep telling me. Like, I have to step back in order for people to step forward. I can't always be holding people's hand and leading them to me. They have to come to me at some point. So that's what I'm doing. Um, and I am so much more happy. I feel less stressed. Um, I, like, financially, we're fine, but we're making, like, half the mo <laughs> half of what we used to make, and I think all of us are happier. I'm home more. I'm not driving to Alliance all the time, and I'm not stressed out near as bad, which makes my hubby happier, which makes my daughter happier. So, things that I thought were, like, the end of the world, like, losing my job and, you know, shutting down my shop because of my health and, and the other stuff. Like, I thought that was the end of the world. And I look back going, Psh, I'm way better off not doing those things right now. Doesn't say that someday I might open up a shop somewhere. I don't know. But right now I'm being more mindful. I'm living in the moment and I'm trying to make me happy, my husband happy, my daughter happy. And then, as it, now that I know how we can make each other happy in my little home, now I can go, okay, down the road, I would love to help others be happy. But until then, it, you know, I'm just going to be me. <laughs> I love the podcast. I love this way that I can reach people. I love 
I love this medium. I never thought I would be doing a podcast. Like if two years ago you would have been, you would have told me, hey, you're going to be doing a podcast about witchy stuff and metaphysical things and spiritual things and burying your soul for complete strangers. <laughs> um, I would have told you to get the fuck out. There's no way. <laughs> But I am, and I am happy, and I am loving it. My husband even noticed. He says, you know, you're helping more people by doing the podcast than you ever did having a shop. And I never thought of it that way. Um, I just thought it was a fun extracurricular activity to do because I'm a Gemini and I like to talk. <laughs> but, but now that I'm getting all the emails and hearing the feedback, I do realize that this is helping. And it makes me feel good inside to know that, you know, my shit show of a life can make somebody else feel not alone, can make you feel like, hey, there are other people going through what you are, and you are never alone. So I appreciate you. I appreciate you so much, you listeners. I wish I could just like give you a giant collective hug because you have helped me in my journey so much. I realized the other day that during that shitty time in June and July that I don't know as if I would have recovered as quick from that as I did if I hadn't had the podcast, if I wouldn't have had the voice to to spill my guts and to clear out my throat chakra and to share all of this. I don't know if I would have recovered near as fast. I also got so much support from you and I, I love you guys for that. I genuinely send you so much love for the thoughts, the prayers, the good juju that you sent. Um, that made all the difference. Like when I was crying and upset and I'd boop, you know, I'd get that, you know, notification on my phone and somebody would send me an email about their journey and how mine has helped theirs. That would just warm my heart and make me feel like, okay, I'm going to get through this and things will get better and I appreciate you. I appreciate you so much. Okay, so now that I'm done gushing and gooing and ooing, <laughs> I'm going to let you guys go. Um, as always, you can get a hold of me on Facebook. Go to Witchy Woman Podcast. That's our page. You can also join our group, Witchy Woman Friends. That's a closed group. Anyone can join. Um, it, it's closed so that if you're not out of the broom closet, nobody's going to see your posts. Um, you can ask questions. I freaking love this group. It's a bunch of very supportive people, witches, pagans, Christians, tons of different faiths, all in one group, and I think it's fabulous. So click to join that. I also have, I'm on Instagram, uh, Witchy Woman, at Witchy Woman Podcast. There's a Twitter account, <laughs> Danae underscore sweet underscore. I'm going to have all this in the show notes. So if you want to click on the link, you can do that. And then, oh, you can get me email by email, Danae at DanaeSweet.com. I'm behind in checking my emails, so I will be getting to that. And if you've emailed me, I will get back to you today. <laughs> also, you can snail mail me. I keep forgetting I have snail mail. You can snail mail me at P.O. Uh, Danae Sweet or Witchy Woman Co Podcast, whichever you want to put, and then put P.O. Box 333, Hyannis, Nebraska 69350. That'll be in the show notes too. I'll also put all the links for the spices. There's some really cool spells and things that I was looking at, and I will make sure that I post those in our group so that I can share. Um, oh, you can get get us at the Patreon page as well. So if you would like to support the podcast, whether that's like a couple bucks or 10 bucks or whatever, um, if you're, if you join our Patreon group, you can go to patreon.com slash witchy woman podcast. If you join that group, then you have access to our, our coven. It's called the WW Coven. Once you have joined the Patreon page, then you will be sent an email with a password and you can join um, the coven. And in the coven, we are doing card pulls, readings. We're going to do um, Sabbath rituals, some full moon and new moon rituals, and just general witchy shit. Um, we're going to try to structure it like a real coven. It's just going to be online. So we're going to do a lot of videos and sharing and interacting in that group. So I'm very, very excited. I love the people that are in it. Um, so click to join that. I'll put that in the comments as well. Okay, well, I hope that you enjoyed this episode. I am super sorry it's out a day late, um, but eh, vacation. <laughs> All right, so as always, stay witchy. Bye.